Once upon a time, deep in the vast expanse of the cosmos, a small-time neighborhood vigilante known as Spider-Man discovered a strange and peculiar costume. Without so much as a second thought given to the possible dangers of his new digs, a young Peter Parker returned from his adventures in the stars to his hometown of New York City. This simple act set in motion perhaps one of the largest calamities the Marvel Universe has ever seen. It would take weeks for Peter to grow suspicious of the suit and even longer before he eventually realized it was a living thing. But one essential question about the snarling sludge would be left unasked. Where did it come from? By the time Venom's next host, Eddie Brock, learned the answer to that question, it was nearly too late to stop one of the darkest forces in the universe from snuffing out life as we know it. This, dear viewers, is the story of how the devil came to Earth. This is the story of Null, god of the symbiotes, the one who turns out the lights. Number 1. The God of Darkness Eddie Brock has been many things in his life. A brazen journalist, a common criminal, a cold-hearted killer, even a stalwart protector. But rarely in his life has Brock been called on to be a hero. But as Brock stood above the streets of New York, listening to his other half writhe and cower in anticipation of the coming storm, he knew that his time to step into the light had finally arrived. He's here, Brock thought to himself. We can feel his screaming through the black, racing toward the whole of creation his hands wrapping around the world's throat. The man who was Venom steeled himself as he switched his communicator on. As the call to arms cascaded through the Avengers global network, alerting the heroes of Earth to a fresh danger on the approach, Eddie traveled back to his apartment where a young boy lay sleeping soundly. This was Dylan Brock, Eddie's biological son who had only recently reunited with his father and whose birth marked the first child born of two symbiote wearers. Eddie wakes the boy gently. I'm sorry, buddy, bud. Eddie starts before he's interrupted by his son. I know, Dylan says. I can feel it too. He's here, isn't he? Eddie's momentary pause is laced with regret before he replies simply, yes. Unable, for the first time in his life, to hide the fear in his eyes. Back at Avengers Mountain, Tony Stark isn't particularly worried. After all, Earth's mightiest heroes have seen it all over the years. What could surprise them at this point? With an armada of abandoned ships rigged to explode, Tony, Cap, She-Hulk, and Captain Marvel feel pretty good about their upper atmospheric booby trap. Anything that wants to get to the surface will have to get through a world of hurt first. But no sooner had the trap been set than a thick cloud of dragon-like symbiotic monsters began to descend from the skies above. A snarling red and black mass of muscle and miasma appear from the black emptiness of space as if they had always been just behind the curtain lying in terrible wait. Stark's bomb detonate just as the swarm breaks the upper atmosphere of the planet and incinerate the symbiotes with one of their only weaknesses, fire. But the rallying first blow soon turned to ash in the hero's mouth when, after the explosions had dissipated, tens of thousands more demonic dragons poured down onto the earth in numbers so unbelievable even Tony Stark finds himself stunned into silence. The armies of the King in Black had arrived, and mercy didn't seem to be in their vocabulary. As the advanced wave of draconic symbiotes made planetfall, Eddie was desperately rushing his son to a bunker dug deep within the bedrock of the planet. Supposedly, it can survive a nuclear holocaust, Eddie thought to himself as he rushed Dylan to the entrance. I just pray it can withstand what's coming now. But even as the two ran, Dylan protested to his father. Dad, please don't do this, the kid begged. Don't leave me here. I can help. You know what I can do, Dad. I have powers like him. Dylan, that's enough. Eddie finally snapped. I made you a promise. I told you I would protect you no matter what, son. And I, Eddie's head sank. You shouldn't have to live this life. This is my fight. These are my mistakes. You, you don't deserve the things I've passed down to you. I'm going to end this. Now, please, this is the last thing I'll ask of you. Stay here. Dylan's steeled gaze of defiance had now melted into one of youthful fear and concern. Dad, he asked. Please come back, please. Eddie's heart broke that he couldn't make his son such a promise. I love you, son, he said simply, and the door slammed closed behind him. Outside, Captain America's forces were barely managing a defiant stand, evacuating as many civilians as they could muster in the process. Across town, the X-Men came to humanity's defense once more, and one of their most powerful members, Storm, stepped up in a big way, making the most of the symbiote's weaknesses to fire and heat. Lightning streaked across the sky and thunder echoed for miles as Earth's defenses rattled at the force of the symbiote's attack. 
But where was Venom, Earth's symbolic symbiote themself? Still underground was Eddie and his other swinging through the sewers to find a throne once belonging to the King in Black's terrible prophet, Carnage. This spire is left over from Carnage's assault on New York. Eddie thinks as he approaches the oozing, veiny throne, it's how he was able to control his hordes. With any luck, it will allow us to safely connect to the hive without being consumed by it. But even as he sits, Eddie knows the gargantuan risks involved with his Hail Mary pass. Or Null finds us immediately and chokes us to death with our own symbiote. A long pause then, it. Eddie thinks as his symbiote connects to the telepathic hive mind that binds together the symbiotic armies of the King in Black. Let's go. But as Eddie's mind is thrust forward and brought to the front lines of Null's assault, he sees the bigger picture laid out in stark terms. I can see it, Tony. It's... Oh god. He reports back to his friends and allies as giant shadows begin to fall across the planet's surface. Null's first armies were the Celestials, and it looks like he's settled the score. Colossal cosmic titans wrapped up in thick knots of symbiotic fluid fell slowly and menacingly from the heavens, their impact with the surface causing skyscrapers to crumble and fall. A voice cold as the abyss and crueler by half emanated from the chest of one of the giants. Ah, it sighed. I see my reputation precedes me, so I won't waste your time. No, god of the symbiotic race stepped out from the empty chest cavity of the celestial he wrote upon. I am going to kill your world, he said without a hint of hyperbole. In the meantime, I am looking for a human named Brock. That is all. But even as the heroes on the ground stared up in awe and terror, they had another card up their sleeves for such an event. With nothing but a golden streak and a rush of wind through the air, the sentry scooped Null from his stand and barreled into the skies. The most powerful hero in Marvel's pantheon greeted his quarry as they tore through the atmosphere. Hi, the sentry said. My name's Bob. Null only smiled wickedly. My horde has memory of you. You once killed the one called Carnage. Let me introduce myself. With that, Null ripped the sentry asunder. Child, he cooed. I am Null. Lord of the Abyss, God of the Symbiotes, the darkness inside of you, that darkness bows to me. I am the Void. But before we get to the rest of the King in Black Siege of Earth, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload and smash that like button for some plot armor today. And now back to the action. Number 2. The Day the Sun Went Black as the two halves of Sentry's broken body started their long fall back to Earth, Null was already back on the ground, facing the heroes of New York with rekindled contempt. Suddenly, the ground turned to muck, threatening to consume them. In the midst of the chaos, only Spider-Man's quick reflexes were able to save him from the clutches of the quicksand, like floor beneath his feet. The rest of the heroes were quickly consumed by the symbiotic sludge. Null reached his hand towards the heavens and said, this sky of yours, no more distractions, no more of your sun, no more stars, no more light. He closed his terrible fist and a mesh of symbiotic material grew and grew, encasing the world in a blackened bubble. The sun's light could not cut through this case of hardened muck, and thus the planet was plunged into darkness. Storm, Earth's one point of strategic strength, was doused from the sky by a terrible black hand. With that, Eddie understood all too well that he was out of options. We're going to have to give him what he wants, Eddie realizes. With that, Eddie's other reaches out for its connection with Null, allowing the ancient god of darkness into their head. Let's go meet our maker, Venom says as the connection is forged. No sooner have they made contact that another symbiotic appendage crashes through the ceiling, lifting Eddie up to the very canopy of New York and face to face with Null himself. Wait, Null says as he inspects Eddie. I know you. You're that host who beat my dragon. I thought I killed you. I do apologize. There's been a bit of confusion. I should have specified which Brock. Null says with a smile. A terrible understanding dawns on Eddie's face. No, no, it's us you want. Leave my son alone. Please, take me. Without but a moment of thought, the King in Black rips Eddie's symbiote off his body and drops him from the highest heights of the Empire State Building to splatter on the streets below. Eddie hit the ground with a spine-shattering smash. In the darkened, symbiote-overrun streets of the city, none ran to his help but one red and blue-clad friendly neighborhood vigilante. Help! Spidey screamed desperately. Please! I need help! Anyone? Is there? But a weak voice, barely audible, stopped Spider-Man's cries for assistance. Pete? Eddie barely managed. Dylan, promise me 
you. But up above, Null still watched his victim as carefully as a hawk. A blast of energy sizzled by Spidey as he ducked out of the way, turning to see the venomized heroes of Earth newly recruited to Null's already indomitable army. Spidey and Eddie would have died right then and there if the Human Torch hadn't arrived and given them both a momentary distraction in the form of a raging supernova, sacrificing himself for their survival. Spidey spirited the venomless Brock back to a Fantastic Four laboratory for medical treatment, but it quickly became clear how dire his situation was. Eventually, Spider-Man returned to the bunker where Dylan was being held for his own safety. When Spidey opened the door, he couldn't even make eye contact with the kid, which told Dylan all he needed to know. Is he dead? A pause. Not, Spider-Man replied, still not meeting Dylan's gaze. Not when I left him, no, but you need to come with me, buddy. Back at the bunker, all the heroes the Earth had left were squabbling over how to best save a planet that had fallen in mere minutes. Even Namor arrived in the planet's time of need, albeit arrogantly as always. The best plan they had? Make nice with their enemies and hope for a little extra help. As Namor went off to the depths of the ocean and Blade went to make a deal with vampires, Iron Man put into action a desperation play of his own. After infecting one of the dragons with a complex techno-virus, Tony was able to extract a single symbiotic entity. Hurrying back to the bunker, the heroes began attempting to bond the symbiote with Eddie, hoping that the alien sludge would begin healing its new host and save Eddie's life. Unfortunately, introducing the new symbiote to Eddie began causing the comatose father to seize right there on the table. In a moment of terror and rage, Dylan lashed out with his mind and atomized the symbiote right in front of the eyes of all those present. But even as Stark and Mr. Fantastic began celebrating the realization that Dylan may be their secret weapon, the persistent whine of a heart monitor flatlining told the room that Eddie Brock has finally passed on. Tears streamed down Dylan's face as he looks with disbelief at the body on the table. Dad? He asks weakly. Above ground, the battle for Earth's continued existence still rages. The invisible woman, now leading the hero's ground troops, shouts to her husband, we need to do something now if we're going to do it. I can't keep these shields up forever. As heroes, villains, and everyone in between argue over the best course of action, Spider-Man gently puts his arm over the shoulder of Dylan Brock, the newly orphaned son of Venom. Hey, do you need a... But Dylan stops him there. I need, the boy says as he wipes his eyes, to hurt something. With that, Spidey and Dylan rush to join the fight on the ground. Dylan's eyes glaze over as he uses his newfound power over the symbiotes to cripple one after another as they scramble to reach the young boy. In the midst of it all, Dylan catches Captain America's iconic shield and lifts it aloft as he cuts through Null's terrible army of zombified symbiotes. There you are, child. Null whispers as he feels Dylan join the fray. Another colossal appendage reaches out to grab the boy, but just as its fingers uncurl, a bolt of lightning rips through the arm and cauterizes a hold in Null's outstretched hand. Thor, god of thunder, has arrived on the battlefield, and with him a glimmer of hope in the darkness. Thor takes on the essential role of keeping Dylan safe and allowing him to work his mysterious powers, disenchanting the symbiote's victims one after another. The two create an impassable line before them through which symbiote monsters step only to be burned to a crisp or disintegrated completely. Null, for the first time all day, scowls down at the battlefield before him. He lands with a crash and challenges Thor with his hateful gaze. I am God of the Void, Null begins, King of the Abyss. I am quiet, Thor commands. So you're a god and a king. Good for you. The two dive at one another and clash against one another with rarely before seen raw power at their fingertips. But when Null tosses Dylan aside, Thor's fury boils over anew. He brings his hammer down with all the might the son of Odin can muster. The keen and black's jaw shatters at the impact and he lies halfway across the field when the terrible god of darkness finally regains his wits. But when Thor turns his back to focus his attention on the incoming Celestials, Null stabs him through the back with his great and terrible blade of darkness and misery. Just as one Avenger falls, however, another rises to fill his shoes. Iron Man, with a newly concocted Technovirus capable of overriding the symbiotes, rides a dragon through the skies above the slaughter. He dives off his steed onto the shoulders of a great Celestial zombie, allowing his technological vines to override the symbiote's control. He dives off his steed onto the shoulders of a great celestial zombie, allowing his technological vines to override the symbiote's control. 
Piloting the ancient cosmic titan, Tony Stark proceeds to throw a perfect left hook across the chin of a neighboring celestial threat, bringing the Colossus to the ground. Even as the heroes regroup and begin to press their small advantage, they are unaware of another reinforcement heading their way, as the Silver Surfer surfs the cosmic spaceways as fast as his board will take him, riding to give his aid to the desperate and dying forces of Earth. Number 3. The Chosen One Dylan Brock, having just moments ago realized the true ferocity of the light and power inside of him, stands alone, surrounded by the demonic heads of a symbiotic shield. Dylan. A dreadful voice whispers, echoed by a chorus of monstrous mouths through gleaming, pointed teeth. Wake up, child. The voice encourages, Do not be afraid. Then, as Dylan turns slowly to see the towering elder deity standing before him, Null says, It is time. But even as Noel begins his evil monologue, striding closer and closer to Dylan with each step, a kinder, warmer, unfamiliar voice also rings in Dylan's head. Dylan, remain calm. Listen to me. I'm a friend. I need you to listen to me. I can get you out of here. Noel has made a mistake bringing you here. You can use him. Use your powers to break into his hive. But just then, Dylan becomes distracted when he hears the king in black utter, You need not die here like the rest. You are special to me. You are, in many ways, my son. Slowly, Dylan begins to reach out to the god. Yes, Null says. That's a good boy. Dylan places his hand inside the dark entity's claws. You killed my dad, he says, hate spilling from his eyes and lips like water from a fire hose. Dylan grips Null's armored hand in his, and the god screams in pain as Dylan directs all of his considerable power through Null, using the deity's physical form like a lightning rod to amplify Dylan's abilities. As Dylan's power cascades across the battlefield, all of the valiant heroes who fell to the symbiotic horde are freed one by one, their symbiotes disintegrating into the air at Dylan's command. The heroes of Earth know a last chance when they see one, and the second they find themselves with clear minds, they make use of this final opportunity. Doctor Strange, along with Cyclops and Sue Storm, channel their powers in tandem to bottleneck Null's forces into one centralized location. Once the symbiotes have been routed, Namor calls forth a tidal wave to drown the army, while Storm and Thor both electrocute the newfound Flood, frying the symbiotes where they stand. This extremely potent one-two punch even manages to take Null by surprise, who finally manages to wrest his arm away from Dylan and grabs the boy by the neck, nearly choking him out then and there. But suddenly, the painful spike of a psychic land sends the King in Black reeling. Jean Grey, one of the most powerful mutants ever born, struts forth from the shadows. Let's see what makes you bleed, she says as she probes deep and forcefully into the God of Shadows' mind. Even as a former host of the Phoenix, what she finds horrifies her. She sees endless power. She sees a weak and meager God at the beginning of time forging his dark and powerful sword. He… he forged the darkness, Jean says bent it to his will. He's beaten everything. There's nothing we can… wait. There, buried far within the vaults of Null's mind, Jean sees it. A light to match the darkness. An opposite power, able to combat and even conquer the forces of darkness. A light that has been opposing Null since the dawn of creation. Oh god, it's… a symbiote, Jean whispers as she kneels, struggling now to keep her grasp over Null's mind. It's his opposite, a god of light. Even as Jean sees the light, it pounds again and again against Null's protective biota casing around the planet. It's here, she says, trying to get in, but it can't, it's trapped. But another, too, watches the struggle of the light breach the darkness. The Silver Surfer, finally arriving, sees what he has come to do. It cannot break through. It cannot pass the barrier, he thinks back to Jean, but I can. The surfer's board pierces but a pinprick in the shield of darkness, but it's more than enough for the force of the god of light to follow his lead. As the surfer barrels through Earth's atmosphere, taking down countless dragons with ease, Null screams in defiance and fury at the turn of events. The light stops as the surfer slows. Oh, I see. The silver sentinel speaks with understanding. You are not here for me. Go then. Go find your warrior. The light streaks through the city. Somewhere in a bunker, Reed Richards finally understands the answer to a question he's been asking for decades. Finally, he whispers, the Enigma Force solved. The room is filled with blinding light as the Enigma Force bursts forth through the bunker. Edward Brock. A voice from beyond speaks as light pours forth from Eddie's body, lifting him off the table and reviving his broken body. You have been chosen. Number 4. A King Redeemed Surfer 
Milgrau staring at the challenger before him. We have met before, yes? Indeed we have, and I remain unimpressed, Null, the surfer says as his board melts beneath his feet and coalesces into a great blade in his hands. In a way, I admire you, little light, Null mocks his opponent as his own grotesque blade appears in his hand. I will remember you. You will die a noble death. Perhaps, the surfer replies, smirking slightly, but I shall not face it alone. From behind Null, the newly freed heroes of Earth charge forward with a ferocity rarely mustered by such exemplars. Before they can reach their foe, however, a bolt of light streaks down from the heavens and lands between Null and the mortals running to face him. I appreciate the assists, fellas. Eddie Brock's voice booms out from the impact, but we'll take it from here. As he lands, Eddie's venom form sparkles with the light of a million stars, shimmering and endless like the universe itself. With the power of the Enigma Force coursing through his veins, Venom effortlessly calls Mjolnir to one hand and the Surfer's Blade to another. All of you, stay here, Eddie says as he clangs the weapons together, melding them together in a burst of light. Protect the innocent. Leave this one to us. And with that, Venom charges forth at the God of Darkness with his battle axe of cosmic light slicing through the air. Null roars into the air and makes to retreat as Venom barrels down upon him. Battalions of symbiotic dragons desperately repositioned to protect their master, but Venom cuts them all down with terrifying ease. Even as a celestial reaches out of the sky to protect Null from the sting of the axe, it quickly finds itself decapitated as Venom charges forth and relieves its head from its shoulders. Flying back to his true target, Eddie holds Null aloft by his neck, standing upon the very building he'd been thrown from only hours ago. I remember when you dragged me up here from the sewers. All the pain, the fear, the, the agony as you ripped my other from me, Venom says as he raises his weapon above his head. I remember all of it. The axe falls. It rips through Null's armored chest like a hot knife through butter. Null screams and gargles in pain at the impact. And when Venom yanks the blade free from Null's chest cavity, it comes with the symbiote that Null himself had worn as his armor. But do you know what I remember the most? And he asks the shivering god before him. I remember feeling hopeless, helpless. I remember falling. He says this and releases Null, who hurtles down to the floor below. But Eddie isn't done with the fallen deity yet. He tosses his axe aside as Null whispers from the ground, You may kill me, but the darkness, it lives in your son. Null finishes with a smile. Venom lifts the god into the air and blasts them through the planetary barrier and into space. He soars through the empty vacuum, a weak and powerless Null in tow. It seems even Venom's cosmic aura burns the very skin from Null's bones as they fly. Eventually, Venom reaches the sun itself. Heaving the God of Shadows up before him, Venom says, You might be right. There will always be darkness, but I don't care. This, this is for Dylan. Eddie lifts Null aloft and plunges the King in Black into the magma of the sun, reducing Null to nothing but atoms as the God of Darkness is cauterized by the scorching rays of the light. The deed done, Eddie returns to Earth as quickly as he can. The fight, it seemed, had been won. Null's symbiotic forces were decimated by the destruction of their god and all seemed relatively well again as the planet-wide shield dropped and the sun's rays once again fell upon the earth. Of all the heroes to congratulate and commiserate with, Eddie walked immediately to his son, who still struggled as the darkness inside of him became more pronounced. It's okay, Eddie said as he took Dylan into his arms. I'm here. Dylan looked thankful but still erratic. I'm still, he said. I have a piece of him and, and I, I, I can feel him burning. I know, son, Eddie said calmly as he reached into his son's chest and removed the festering source of the darkness. I made you a promise, Eddie told Dylan as he brought the dark heart up and closed his fist around it, destroying the cancerous thing. You will not inherit the darkness. With that, the Enigma Force no longer had need of a host and withdrew from Eddie as quickly as it came. As soon as the God of Light had left Eddie, however, his old symbiote found him and reattached with glee. We're okay. Venom told Dylan, a newfound calm and peace radiating from his tone. I can hear them all. Eddie thought to himself, the hive, but I can't, I can't understand them. Eddie could hear his other's voice in his head as he suddenly grew wings and took to the skies. They were speaking to you in our ancient language, Eddie. Because you, you defeated the void. You freed our kind. You are the hive mind now, Eddie. You are the god of the symbiotes. You are the king in black. Thanks so much for watching today's video. How do you feel about Eddie's rise to godhood? Let us know in the comments. From all of us here at Plot Armor Comics, I've been Morse Code, you've been awesome, and we wish you a wonderful day.